I'm now the leftist. My name, I used to go by Jimmy Crary. Jimmy Crary. I go by Mac, Mac Crary. I live in Tacoma, I grew up in Pittsburgh, I'm a poet. Uh, I like Russia. I just got done watching a tape of Vlad Vexler catering to the American veterans who support the war in Iraq. In an argument with Noam Chomsky, I don't support either one of these people. Vexler evidently is in the Ukraine. He has personal concerns. I've spoken to people who were in Iraq who hated Saddam Hussein and were hallelujah for America to do what they did. I thought it was appalling, despicable, and full of lies. It was an attempt to sell the military industrial complex. But although I continue to see the same thing in Iraq that I see in America's meddling in the Ukraine, I think I should probably put this in as clear a context as possible because it's not really a pro-Russian sentiment. It's a pro-American sentiment because I'm an American. The things that happened to me may or may not have had something to do with the geopolitical arrangements of our society. It was a legacy expulsion. I was continuing the work of my father in human rights, civil rights, trying to get an education in a city that destroyed me, beat me, cruelly ma manipulated me, tortured me, and then lied from the highest levels of Congress and the executive about what had really happened to me. So, you know, my concerns about my educational uh, limitations and right to education are clearly responsible concerns. I did elevate myself in politics. I expressed my opinions in editorials, but I'm deaf. I couldn't go to school. I spent most of my time washing dishes. I could see the lack of grace towards Russia after they brought down the Berlin Wall. It appalled me and it disgusted me. I was sure that no good would come from it, but I never knew it would be this bad. You have to understand that the invasion of the Ukraine did not happen in a vacuum. Ukraine was very mysterious to me when we broke out. It was never really possible to apprehend what was happening in Syria, Iraq, or Afghanistan because the press foreclosed. They didn't do in-depth reporting. They didn't study the veterans' remorse. They didn't allow the veterans to speak out the way they did during the Vietnam War. And so people who learned to trust Noam Chomsky's objectivity about the Vietnam War turned to him. And he did the sort of thing that Noam Chomsky does. He applied a single human rights standard to affairs between powerful nations and smaller, less powerful nations. Now, the Ukraine was very mysterious. I got the picture of some of the blood curdling things that went on as NATO expanded. There are things that are known as expansionist religions. One of the reasons why George Bush went on a collision course with the Islamic world was that the Israelis sold American Christians on the idea that if they didn't, Islam would expand. It's an expansionist religion. NATO's expansion is a sign that they have no diplomatic courtesy, that they intended to obliterate anything that was different from us. This is wrong. This is a mistake, and it harks back to the barbarism of Adolf Hitler. People at the University of Pittsburgh often told me that these kinds of things were the nature of reality. They were built into the way man is. Gurdjieff used to talk that way, the mystic who inspired the British eccentrics like Roger Waters. But it's not true. Adolf Hitler was an anomaly of barbarism. He was the odd man out. He was like a man who shoots up schools. And it's senseless to see a man who shoots up a school. This is what the right wing is always complaining about. That the, 
never will see a man who shoots up schools every time someone owns a, a rifle, has the right, exercises the right to bear arms and self-defense. Doesn't mean they're going to go and shoot up schools. It's an anomaly. You can't say Adolf Hitler every time somebody says something against your expansionist and criminal actions, because it was criminal to kill 14,000 Russians in Donbass. It was criminal to overthrow a lawfully elected government in Kiev just because they were sympathetic to Russia. It was criminal to break promises, criminal to refuse to sign treaties in good faith and then enforce those treaties. So the mystery of Ukraine has become less mysterious. It's mysterious to me still why the government in Ukraine doesn't want to negotiate peace. They're constantly saying that Putin wants to push forward and destroy NATO countries, the NATO alignments, European Union. But the likelihood of Putin stepping down and being replaced by someone more reform-minded increases with peace because they're civilized people. They're not the type of people who go shooting up schools, who go into these things because they want to. There was a situation in Russia because of the invasion of Adolf Hitler where Stalin clearly got out of hand. There was the Holodur, the starvation in the Ukraine after the terrible invasion. It's senseless to remove the cause from the effect they talk about that in the Killing Fields film. Have anybody ever lionized um, the moment of truth where he says maybe they underestimated how much insanity $5 million worth of bombing would produce? It's not a mistaken comprehension. The insanity of the Vietnam War led to the terrible genocides of the Khmer Rouge. We were not fighting a reasonable battle. We invaded. We invaded with practically nothing to go on. A bullet hole in the hull of a ship that we called a torpedo. The Tonkin Gulf resolution came from the Gulf incidents like a bunch of hysterical children. And so I know that Noam Chomsky has done some very good and fascinating work in keeping away from the double arithmetic of the nation state, as Paul Collazo once called it, the double illusion that the small nations count as much as the large nations. But to get back to the context of the situation, we're not talking about, I've considered it dishonorable to go jumping immediately into Ukraine when there are a lot of nations that need help without understanding what was going on, and then pushing this prototypical, like, a, like you're a draft dodger for not supporting anti-Russian hysteria. Well, it turns out I had been tortured. The Russians have been relatively nice to me most of the time. But I was lied to and about, and they were not completely innocent in that matter. The UN came up with their decision about how to manipulate me through the offices of Maduro Goto and Roger Waters. Oliver Stone, Sarah Wecht were chummy with Putin about that. It didn't happen in a vacuum. It happened with the COVID-19 attack. I was investigating the AIDS attack. It didn't happen because Putin poisoned novel written me. It didn't happen that that way. It happened um, because they were all concerned with sweeping COVID under the carpet. It happened in the context of climate change. Queen Elizabeth's last stand against climate change appears to have been COVID. They made me the unwilling pinup boy of the AIDS attack and let it dawn on me as time went by, how I was being used, like the Moxie Land crowd in the famous book of um, Cyberpunk by Lauren Bukes, about which I had begged Greta to advise herself concerning, because she has played a similar role as a pinup girl for the COVID attack. I want to believe unwillingly 
So has Camille and Beliva. These girls are important to me. I admire them. They're a generation that needs to be focused on understanding things that have come from time past. But the leaders in America are grossly inept in these matters. Obama clearly did not have a father from World War II, clearly did not understand the uh, uh, I, I can't find the word. I mean, I know barbarism, I know horror. The, the, human loss of what that horrible man did in Ukraine. And you compare Putin to him? Putin is a rational, sensible individual. He may be bellicose because he feels that help comes too late for Russians. But to make him out to be That kind of gross anomaly is absurd. It seems to me that these people who evoke Adolf Hitler secretly admire him in the United States. And that's very horrifying and condemnatory thing to say. I have dedicated most of my political activities to convincing myself that can't be true. That can't be what Pitt means when they allow the Fernhalder Bridge to collapse. That can't be true. I wake up shivering sometimes. That can't be true. So I watch TV. I know that some of these personalities on television who interview like Robert Kennedy mean well when they push the idea that they're Charles de Gaulle, the man who stood alone in temporal times were necessary. Miracles of, of, of fate, and that without such leadership, all would have fallen. And they'll get a gold star on their forehead for saying, you didn't, you didn't stand up to the class bully when Putin, Putin came in swinging. There was an element of that behind what Putin did. I was opposed to what Putin did, but admittedly, Don Bass was mysterious to me. The more I've learned, the more I understand the role that NATO expansion played in this. You expect him to believe that you're just, we're just going to put on long-range missiles at their border. We promise not to do anything else. When we have subjected them to lie after lie, it's like believing that the Veterans Administration didn't poison me and deliberately giving me Parkinson's. It's absurd. That's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with poison criminals. And it's absurd to say that we're not. But I keep telling myself, surely the United States has not fallen that low, that they admire the people who shoot up schools, that they admire Adolf Hitler. And when you say, then don't admire Putin, well, okay.